Hello. Today's edition of Simple School is going to be third grade, and this is Abeka History, Our American Heritage. My name is Mrs. Odell, and I am certified to teach grades K through eight. The Unit One, Founding of America, Chapter One, Christopher Columbus. We're going to read just basically the unit and the chapter together. And then with third grade, we'll do cards the way we did with first grade. And in middle school, we do the journals. I have started off in the living room instead of the den because my birds got very excited yesterday and I had to move. They were drowning me out. And with our cards, we'll do, I'll have the different colors. You can use different sized cards. I keep mine in a box. You can use white cards or you can use smaller cards or larger cards. And these are history cards. They're study cards. You write your words on them and you can use different color pens. I get mine from the Dollar General. I am going to use black and I'm going to do black pen on different colored cards for today. The words that we are going to have for today, we're going to find right here on the first part of our lesson. It says important words with a red star and it has pirates, caravan, and voyage. So I'm going to choose cards for those now. And for pirates, I'm going to choose a blue card like the blue of the ocean because I think that if I write the word pirates on a blue card like the water of the ocean, it will help me to remember the word pirates more easily. I like to make associations when I'm trying to learn new information because then I can help remember the information better. The second word is caravan. A pirate is a sailor who robs from ships. A caravan is a group that travels together, especially through the desert. So desert reminds me of sand. I'm going to choose a yellow card that I think of sand when I think of yellow. And I'm going to write caravan. And that is a group that travels together, especially through the desert. Voyage is my last word. And I'm going to use a light blue color for that because it's also going to remind me of the sea or the ocean like pirates but it is going to be light blue l is for long a long trip across the sea or ocean is a voyage and these are going to be my three words that i'm going to need to know today my important names are going to be next to my important words. And those names are going to say, Christopher Columbus, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, and Nina Pinta and Santa Maria. I'm gonna put Christopher Columbus on a light blue card because he went on a long voyage. And in 1492, he sailed the ocean blue. I'm going to put King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella on a pink card because she's a queen and queens like the color pink. Well, some of them do. And they gave him money that he could explore the ocean and discover parts of America. They were the king and queen of Spain. He was an Italian explorer. Then on the last card, I'm gonna use a dark blue for the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. And those were the names of his three ships that he used to sail on when he went on his voyage in the year 1492. So I now have three plus three to equal six. I have six cards made with different names on them. After I finish reading this lesson, I'm gonna go back to my cards 
I'm going to draw a picture about what I learned. Sailors and Sea Monsters. As a boy, Christopher Columbus watched the large ships sail into his hometown of Genoa, Italy. Genoa starts with a G. Genoa was a very important seaport town at that time. Young Christopher had many questions for the sailors. What are other lands like? How do you guide the ships by the stars at night? What is the sea like? So if you have many questions, then you can be described with an adjective. An adjective is a descriptive word. That would be curious. He was curious. Are there really monsters in the sea big enough to swallow whole ships in one gulp? Have you ever seen boiling spots in the sea? Christopher wasn't the only one to wonder these things. The sea was a big mystery, even to sailors of that day. Mystery is something that people do not know the answer to. If they sailed too far from land, would they ever be able to get back? No one had seen monsters or boiling spots. A boiling spot would be a part of the sea where it got really, really hot. But all sailors wondered about them. The Sea of Darkness. Italy is just one of the many countries on the continent called Europe. Portugal, Spain, England, France, Germany, and Russia are a few other countries in Europe. Just as the United States, Canada, and Mexico are all part of the continent called North America. There's actually seven continents in the world, and that was just two of them, Europe and North America. And there's five more continents to make seven. And the names of the continents are, and there's a song that'll help you remember them, Asia, Africa, North and South America, Australia, Antarctica, and Europe too. By two, that means also. Asia, Africa, North and South America, Australia, Antarctica, and Europe too. Europe also. Leif Erikson. It is believed that Leif Erikson, a Viking explorer, landed in North America about 500 years before Christopher Columbus. So if you subtract 500 years from 1492, then you will go back to the year 992. Many people in Europe had never heard of Leif Erikson in 1492 when Columbus sailed to islands off the coast of North America as he tried to find a better way to reach the Indies. He thought that if he sailed west, he could reach east, or if he sailed east, he could reach west. He thought that the world was round, which it is. In Christopher Columbus's day, no one in Europe knew about America. No one in North America knew about Europe. Most people in Europe thought the rest of the world was sea. Since they had never sailed this sea, they called it the Sea of Darkness. And there's a drawing of the Sea of Darkness. And that would be a great picture if you wanted to draw a picture. No one wanted to sail the scary unknown sea. No one that is, but Christopher Columbus. Here's a picture of the map of the world. So we have Europe, we have Italy, where Christopher Columbus was from, Spain, where King Ferdinand and Queen Isab Isabella lived, Africa, South America, and North America. This is where I live. I live in North America. And down here is San Salvador with Hispaniola, which is where Columbus reached, and Cuba. Sailing at last. No one is sure when Col Christopher Columbus began sailing on ships, but one thing is certain, he loved sailing. Before long, he became captain of his own ship. Back and forth, he sailed to countries that were close by. How he dreamed of the day when he could sail further to learn about the world. And there is a picture of him, a drawing. One day, someone asked Captain Columbus to sail a ship to the distant country of England. For the first time, he sailed out into the noisy, restless ocean. The sailors soon learned to trust their captain. 
he could handle the ship with ease. That means that he was a natural at sailing. Shipwreck. As Columbus sailed from Spain to England, his ship rounded the coast of Portugal. Suddenly, a group of pirate ships attacked his ship. Columbus would not give up. He fought bravely, but there were too many pirates fighting against him. His ship broke apart and sank, and all of the sailors drowned. Isn't that awful? Christopher Columbus grabbed hold of a large oar that was floating in the water. Holding on to the oar, he kept himself afloat. After many hours, he was washed ashore in the country of Portugal. Comprehension check. There's three questions. Christopher Columbus grew up in Genoa. Do you remember the name of the country? It is Genoa. Do you remember what it said back here? It said Genoa, Italy, which was the name of an important seaport town. Number two, do you remember who landed in North America about 500 years before Columbus? He was a Viking explorer and his name was Leif Erikson. And you spell his name L-E-I-F for Leif, not L-E-A-F, Leif Erikson. Number three, in Christopher Columbus's day, the people of Europe called the unexplored sea. Do you remember that drawing? They called it the Sea of Darkness because they didn't know if they were sea monsters or boiling spots. It was a big mystery to them. They didn't know anything about the sea. Stop and think. Pretend you are a sailor in the days of Christopher Columbus. How would you describe the unknown sea? So you could even get out a piece of paper and you could write some sentences about how would you describe the sea. Would you describe it as really big or endless? Would you describe it as a mystery? Would it be scary, unknown? Those are all adjectives. Those are descriptive words to describe something. Finding a way to the Indies. Many fine map makers. Those are, that's a noun. Those are people who make maps lived in Portugal. Now, a map is something that shows us where something is, gives us directions. They hoped to find a new way to the Indies, another name for India, China, Japan, and the Spice Islands. So India, China, Japan, and the Spice Islands were all called the Indies. They wanted to find a new way to get there. Many countries in Europe longed to buy the riches that the Indies had to offer them. These things that the Indies had were pearls, gold, silk, and spices. Though people could make this journey by land, it took a long, long time. Treasures from the Indies had to be carried on the backs. You know what kind of, can oh, you know what kind of animal? They have humps on their backs, and they don't drink very much water. They were camels. They carried the treasures from the Indies, which are the lands of India, China, Japan, and the Spice Islands. The camel caravan would have to travel through many countries. And some of these countries were enemies that, were not, that would not let the camel caravans pass through. Now remember, a caravan is a group of travelers usually crossing through the desert. We made a card about a caravan, and on the back of this card, you could draw camels passing through a desert. We made it yellow like sand. Often, the caravans were robbed and their goods sold to the people of other countries for very high prices. Only a very rich man could afford to buy spices for his food. Spices are like salt and pepper. There had to be an easier way to buy goods from the Indies. One day, Christopher Columbus was listening to some sea captains. They were talking about finding a sea route to the Indies. The captains agreed that if they sailed east around Africa, one day someone would find a route to India and the rest of the Indies. Sailing east to reach the west. 
Suddenly, an idea came to Columbus. If the world is round, as I have heard, he thought, why couldn't a ship sail west and come to the east? Somewhere the east has to meet the west, and vice versa. The quickest way to the Indies is sailing west, not east, he excitedly told them. The captain shook their head. The ocean is too big. You would sail till you ran out of food and drinking water, they said. At that time, no one realized how long such a trip would take. Even Christopher Columbus did not know for sure how big or small the world was. Looking for help. Surely the king of Portugal will listen to my idea, thought Christopher Columbus. The king might lend me ships and a crew to try to reach the Indies by sailing west. If I could reach the Indies, I could make the king of Portugal rich with all the spices, gold, and pearls that I would bring back to him. When the king of Portugal did not believe that Christopher Columbus had a good idea, do you think Columbus gave up? No, he did not give up. He pressed on. He persevered. Instead, he sailed to Spain. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, remember our pink card, of Spain, listened to all that he ha had to say. They were interested, but at that time, Spain was at war. There were a lot of wars back then. Come back after the war is over, they said. Here's a picture of the king and the queen talking to Columbus. And on the back of that pink card, you could draw a crown for the king and the queen. Six years passed before Spain won the war. Queen Isabella once again became interested in hearing what Christopher Columbus had to say. The king and queen thought and thought. Finally, they said yes, getting ready to sail. Christopher Columbus was given the title Admiral of the Ocean Sea, and he was given three ships for his journey. Remember the three ships? We wrote them on a blue card. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And on the back of this card, you could draw a picture of three ships. The Nina, whose name means little one, so that ship's gonna be small, was the smallest of the three ships, but it was built the best. The Pinta was the fastest of the three ships, and the Santa Maria was the largest of the three ships. So you'll have a small ship, a fast ship, and a large ship. The Santa, uh, the Columbus, Admiral of the Ocean Sea, well, do you know which ship he was the captain of? The smallest, the fastest, or the largest? That's right, he was the captain of the largest ship, the Santa Maria. Now Columbus needed to find a captain for the Nina and one for the Pinta. So he needs a captain for the little ship, the Nina, and a captain for the fast ship, the Pinta. So to remember that the Pinta is fast, think about a puma. It's an animal that runs really, really fast. And think that uh, the Pinta starts with a P and the Puma starts with a P too. And then think that the Nina is little. And in Spanish, Nino is a child. And so a child would be little. And you can remember what those mean. But that'd be a hard job. When the sailors heard that they would be sailing on the Sea of Darkness, what do you think they said? You're right, they said no. No one from Europe had ever sailed on the Sea of Darkness or knew how big this sea was. Perhaps, thought the frightened sailors, we will die of hunger and thirst if we cannot find land. That would be scary to not have enough food and water. It was not only the Sea of Darkness that worried the sailors. They did not trust Christopher Columbus. He had proven himself to be a good captain in Portugal, but the Spanish sailors had never heard of Christopher Columbus. They would not sail upon the Sea of Darkness with a captain they did not know and trust. Would you get into a ship with someone that you did not know and trust and go out into a sea that you had never even seen? I wouldn't. Finally, a well-known Spanish sea captain signed up to be captain of the Pinta. The Spanish captain's brother signed up to be captain of the Little Nina. The sailors trusted these captains, and at last the sailors began forming crews for the three ships. Here's a picture of what it would look like inside of a boat like the Santa Maria. 
And here's a picture of the Santa Maria, beautiful ship. And then the Pinta, the fast ship, and the Nina, the little ship. Comprehension check. What is another name for India, China, Japan, and the Spice Islands? And if you said the Indies, then you would be right. Number two, what were the names of the king and the queen who finally helped Christopher Columbus? And if you said King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain, you would be right. Number three, name the three ships Christopher Columbus was given. If you said the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, then you would be right. Number four, what title did the king and queen give to Columbus? And if you said Admiral of the Ocean Sea, then you would be right. And number five, why did the Spanish sailors not want to become part of Christopher Columbus's crew? And if you said it's because they didn't trust Christopher Columbus, then you would be right. Sailing on the Sea of Darkness. Just before dawn on August the 3rd, 1492, the three ships set sail. When weeks had passed and the sailors still could not see land, do you know what happened? Do you think they were super happy? Mm -mm. They were frightened. Turn back, they begged, but the Admiral of the Ocean Sea. Now, who was the Admiral of the Ocean Sea? That's right, Christopher Columbus. He told them of the great riches they would find in the Indies. You want to be rich, don't you? He asked them, so he kind of he kind of appealed to their greed to keep them going. In the middle of September, the boats sailed through seaweed so thick that they were afraid the boats would become tangled in it. That almost sounds like something out of a science fiction book written by Jules Verne. Do you know who Jules Verne is? He is a science fiction author who wrote Journey to the Center of the Earth and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Around the World in 80 Days. October came and there was still no sign of land. The sailors became so frightened that they plotted to kill Christopher Columbus. Can you believe it? They were so afraid that they actually came up with a plan to kill the Admiral of the Ocean Sea. Let's throw him overboard! We can tell the king and queen that he slipped and fell into the sea. Mm. This shows us the depravity of man when they become very afraid. Columbus sensed his crew's feelings, so he, he kind of knew what was going on, didn't he? On October 10th, he promised them, If we do not see land in three days, I will turn the ship around. Land. Christopher Columbus was sure land was near. He had seen land birds flying over the water. Birds would not fly far away from land, he reasoned, because of course birds cannot fly forever. They have to rest in a tree. On October the 11th, he noticed a carved stick floating in the water. A person had to carve that stick, he said. Here's a picture. On October 12th, 1492, just two hours after midnight, so add that up. And what time do you have? It's right, 2 a.m. in the morning. Land was seen in the bright moonlight. At daybreak, they lowered a small boat into the water. Columbus and some of his men rowed to shore. Columbus believed he had found the island off the coast of India. He never found out that he had really discovered an island that was not very far from the American continent. Columbus thanks who? Does he thank the king and queen of Spain? No, Columbus thanks God. What did Columbus and his men do first? Everyone knelt and thanked God for his goodness to them. He planted Spain's flag in the ground and claimed the island for Spain. He named it San Salvador, which means holy savior. The Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name. And that's Psalm 92.1. Columbus meets the Indians. Here's a picture of his ships. The largest, the Santa Maria, the fastest, the Pinta, and the littlest, the Nina. 
the Nina. I've got, lost my Spanish accent there. I don't have a Spanish accent, by the way. Christopher Columbus had no idea that the people he had found were very different from the people of the Indies. He had no books and no pictures to look at. He thought he was on one of the islands in the Indies, so he named the natives that he saw Indians. The Indians were very friendly. They brought the strange white men food, but they could not bring gold because there was hardly any gold on their island. Columbus sailed on. Before long, he found other islands. One island was Cuba and another was Hispaniola where he finally found gold. And if you guess, you might guess that, um, well, I live on the North American continent and probably came down from the uh, Native American people. Columbus returns to Spain. How excited King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain were to see Columbus and the interesting items he brought back with him. He showed them strange plants, brightly colored birds, and several Indians in native dress that his crew had captured, but he had very little gold. Sailing for riches, Christopher Columbus sailed across the ocean three more times. On his third voyage, he actually found the South American continent. Each time he thought he was near India, but of course he never sailed anywhere near India. India is in the continent of Asia. With each voyage, his crew and even the people of Spain had respect for him. Why didn't Columbus find the gold, pearls, silks, and spices of India, they complained. Because his sailors wanted to become rich, they disobeyed him. We know what it means to disobey, right? It's when we do what we're not supposed to do. And we know the Bible says that children need to obey their parents, right? They obey their mommies and their daddies because... This is good. This pleases the Lord. Obedience to the Lord is good. And when you're a child, obedience to your mommy and your daddy is good. In order to find more gold, his crew made slaves of every Indian they found. Making slaves of people is bad. Now, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, sometimes people entered into slavery because it was something that they decided to do as a way to pay off a debt that they had, a, a payment they had. And after seven years, in the year of Jubilee, the slave master would let their slaves go free as a way to honor God. But when people capture other people and they kidnap them, they force them into slavery, that's bad. That's really bad. So after his fourth voyage, Columbus returned to Spain to find Queen Isabella dying. He was very ill too. Two years later, in the year 1506, he died. Columbus Day. On or near October 12th, both North America and South America celebrate Columbus Day. This was the date that Christopher Columbus first stepped onto land in the New World. That's the name of the North American continent. It's the New World. He had sailed west, but he never sailed far enough to find the east. The American continents stood in his way. And there's a picture of his statue. And the, our, one of our states, Hawaii, well, it's right in the middle of uh, the North American continent, the West Coast, uh, over by California, and Japan. Though Christopher Columbus never saw the East, he did give other sea captains the courage to explore. After that, there was a huge age called the Age of Exploration. There was no longer a sea of darkness. Instead, there was a new world. And part of that new world would soon become what is now the United States of America. And we have 50 states in our country. And we are all united. Stop to think. The men sailing with Christopher Columbus were sailing into an unknown sea with no maps and no GPS. Even their captain had no clear idea of what was ahead. The fear of not knowing the future and the desire for riches caused many of the sailors to complain and even disobey. Would you have enjoyed working for Christopher Columbus? Why or why not? And these are some questions that you can answer 
on a piece of paper or you can even write down your own story about. Would you have enjoyed working among the sailors on his boat? What do you think? Yes or no? Why or why not? And you can write this down and you can even discuss this with your mommy or your daddy. If you have any siblings or your friends, True or false, Christopher Columbus found the Indies. Well, no, false. He didn't find the Indies, but he did find part of the New World. Columbus landed on the island of San Salvador on October the 12th, 1492, and that is true. Columbus's men hoped to find great riches, and that is true. The people of Spain were pleased with Columbus's discovery, and that is false. They were hoping that he would discover the Indies, and he did not make it to the Indies. Christopher Columbus named the natives Indians because he thought he was near the Indies, and that is true. The next time that we return to third grade history in simple school, we will do chapter two, John Smith. Um, he is a European who hoped to find riches in the new world. And I thank you for joining us for simple school today. Go back to your cards, I hope that you made them, and draw pictures on the backs of your cards to try to remember some of the words that you have learned. Hope you have a great day and I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, bye-bye.